Hi, welcome back to PSRE Math Real Estate Lesson. Now, in this series of lessons, we are going to look at methods, all right? Uh, like what do we teach at MLGS? We made most of our lessons, we cover methods on how to solve work problems. So in our last lesson, we talked about guess and check, how to use guess and check to, to solve our problems. Uh, however, guess and check method is the last method you want to use uh, because it takes a lot of time. So uh, there'll be other ways, right? If you do not want to use guess and check, there are also other ways to, to work out the answer. So one of the methods that we want to talk about today is three rows get the answer. And this is an alternative to assumption method uh, because assumption method, most students find it's a little hard to understand, uh, even hard to master the method. So for those students who find that assumption method is a little hard, then they can replace it with three rows get the answer. All right, but we are not gonna to talk too much about this method. I'm just gonna tell you generally, all right, how to, how to use this method to replace assumption. Okay, so let's read the question. And then we, of course, we underline and highlight the important words. There is a total of 88 cars and motorcycles. So let's uh, highlight. So when you solve problem, it is important that you highlight the keywords and the numbers. So this is a total number of vehicles and each car has four wheels and each motorcycle has two wheels. So there are 304 wheels all together. So how many more, how many motorcycles are there in the warehouse? So this is a very good question for assumption, right? Unfortunately, some students, they, they have difficulty trying to understand how to use the method. So we will talk about assumption method in our next few lessons. Uh, but how do we use three rows get the answer? Now it's similar to your guess and check, which means that you draw a table, all right, a table, okay? And then you cut one row, and of course you label, okay? So you don't cut many rows. You only cut, uh, you only cut the rows as you need. So I cut one row and then I cut one column and I don't cut many columns. I only cut one column so that I can label first. Uh, for example, I can put down the number of cars and if I need another column, I will cut, right? If I need another column, then I will cut one more and I will call it the number of wheels that belong to the cars. And then I cut another column, which is the number of motorcycles. And then I cut another column, which is the, the wheels that belong to the motorcycles. And then I cut another column and I will put down the total vehicles. And I have another last column, <clears throat> which is the total number of wheels. Now in your guess and check, there is a last column, which is yes and no. <clears throat> so, but for this method, we don't need to use the, we don't have the yes and no. There's no tick and cross. All right. Now, once you have labeled your, your first row, then you have to cut three rows because the method says three rows get the answer. So how do we do that? Now, uh, the most interesting part about this method is you always start with one. All right. That is the special characteristics of this method. So you start with one car. You can also start with one motorcycle. Now in your guess and check, uh, you take the total number and you divide by two. So you start with half, all right, half each. So 40, 44 cars and 44 vehicles, right, for guess and check. But when you use this method, you do not cut into half. You start with one, okay, one car. And if there's one car, then there'll be 87 motorcycles. And one car has four wheels. 87 motorcycles will be 87 times two there'll be 174 wheels and add together will be 178 wheels altogether. So that's your first row. Now in the second row, it's also very easy to fill in the boxes. If you start with one car, then you continue with two cars. And if there are two cars, there'll be four times two, eight wheels, and there must be 86 motorcycles. So 86 times two, that will give you 172 motorcycle wheels. And the total number of wheels add together will be 180 wheels. And the total vehicles will be still 88. Now the third row, you have to get the answer already. So how exactly do we do that? Now the first two rows is to help you to find a pattern, right? There is a pattern here. So, so how do we get the pattern? You compare the two rows, the first two rows. If you increase by one car, then the wheels will increase by two. Right, you have two more wheels. Every time you increase one car, there will be two more wheels. 
So you jump from the second row to the third, I mean you jump from 180 to the correct total number of wheels, which is 304. So how many more wheels uh, are added? So you take 304 minus 180. So there's an increase of 124 wheels. Okay, then how many more cars is that? How many cars do you increase? So if you increase one car, you have two more wheels. And if there are 124 more wheels, then how many more cars? You take 124 divided by 2. So you must have increased by how many cars? You must have increased by 62 cars. So how many cars in the third row? You take 2 plus 62, that will give you 64 cars. And how many motorcycles? You take 88 minus 64, that will give you 24 motorcycles. And how do you know whether you are correct? You add up the wheels and see whether does it give you the same total. So if there are 64 cars, then 64 times 4, you get 256 wheels. And if there are 24 motorcycles, you times 2, that will give you 48 motorcycle wheels. Right? And then you plus them together, so you have 256 plus 48, and you get the same total number of wheels. So how many motorcycles are there in the warehouse? There are 24 motorcycles in the warehouse. So this is how you use the three rows to get the answer to solve problems that can also be used by, uh, that can also use guess and check. I mean, guess and check and also assumption. You can also do guess and check for this question. Uh, but for assumption method, if you have difficulty trying to use that method, then this is an alternative, right? Uh, so it's not very time consuming compared to guess and check where you may have more than three rows. Uh, but in this method, you just need three rows to work out the answer. All right, so that's the end of our series. I mean, that's the end of our lesson on, on this method. Now in the coming lesson or in the coming lessons ahead, we will be uh, touching on the methods that we will learn in MLGS, right? The many kinds, I won't say many kinds of method, uh, just several of them. Uh, we will be learning them. We will we will expose you or we will tell you what are the methods that we will teach in MLGS uh, because methods are important. Without the methods, it's difficult to solve problems, right? But once you know the methods, uh, you will be able to start somewhere. All right, so that's the end of our lesson for today and I will see you in the next round.